Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Drop. I'm your humble host, Nancy Jundy, and COO here at Digital Film Tree. This is the third episode in our DFT and ACE at South by Southwest season. And this one looks a little different here in the intro because we didn't actually get to host this one, but we did have the high honor and privilege of providing post services for Lizzo's Watch Out for the Big Girls, all episodes currently on Amazon Prime. This keynote that you're about to hear from her touches on every facet of what we really truly appreciate and support when it comes to not just the storyteller, but the community that we're aiming to build here and around Digital Film Tree. The care that was taken in color, which you have to, and you will see for yourself, both if you watch the series or listen to her keynote, but there are a variety of skin tones in these competitors. They're dancing, they are in brightly colored costumes, their hair textures are all wildly different. And the huge, huge thing here that a lot of people might not know is that casting decisions are often made on the consequences in post-production. Lighting decisions on stage are often kind of a matter of fact and aren't necessarily always taken into account for how someone of a certain skin tone or the various skin tones might show up during editorial and the color correction process. And also as someone with hair somewhat similar in that regard, I can tell you that how a person is filmed in front of the color of screen in which they're sitting is a huge, big deal. And so to have that trust placed in us to carry a show like this forward, was more than just an honor, it was a duty. And we are so glad that we were charged with that. And our senior colorist, Henry Santos, was there every step of the way, working in our theater with Team Lizzo, uh, many of her captains coming in to make sure that her wants and desires were represented because truly, and you will again hear this in this keynote, it is about those that she is hoping to include and represent and bring to the forefront and not doing anything that would compromise the true validity and beauty of the bodies that were on screen. But dancers' costumes move. And I want you to hear from us, at least in that capacity, the great care that was taken to make sure that every single last one of these dancers, these women, these people that are giving of themselves and putting in front of the camera everything that they've got to not only you know, be a part of this wonderful community that, can, that Lizzo is creating, but also to get out there and give other people an opportunity to see themselves on screen in this way. And you're gonna hear so much wonderful stuff from Lizzo about she was just a person before she was ever famous and what she is doing with that fame and how and the excitement that we had and heard and saw in that room that I think you'll get to see a little bit of in this keynote as well. It is contagious and to be a part in any small way, which to be fair, I don't know that it was that small. We really did get to work in depth on every last one of these episodes, protecting for championing each and every last one of these dancers. Um, We're so proud to be a part of Lizzo's Watch Out for the Big Girls, and we really hope you enjoy Lizzo's keynote introducing you to some of them. With that, enjoy, and we'll see you next time here on The Drop. Hello everyone, my name is Austin Nauert and I'm the Senior Film Programming Conference Manager here at South by Southwest. It's wonderful to see everyone. Uh, is everyone enjoying their third day here at South by so far? I think it's about to get a little bit better too. 
Um, before we get started, I wanted to, to do some housekeeping. Uh, Q&A will be done digitally via Slido. You can access Slido on the South by Southwest Go app or via our online schedule. Uh, and you can ask questions uh, for Lizzo uh, to potentially answer later in the session. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but Lizzo's here. Oh. It's amazing. I'm not going to belabor this because I want to see Lizzo on stage as much as y'all do. Um, before we bring Lizzo out, I'm going to introduce our esteemed interviewer, Angela Yee, to kick off this session. Yeah. She is the award-winning media personality and co-host of Power iHeart Media's national syndicated radio show, The Breakfast Club, as well as the popular relationship sex podcast, Lip Service. Outside of media, Angela's tapped into her entrepreneurial spirit with several endeavors cent uh, centered around giving back to her community. Yi has her Wealth Wednesdays platform to help address wealth inequality and, launch Angela, uh, and launched Angela Yi's book club, which showcases minority authors with unique stories. With a successful two-decade media career and her finger on the pulse of hip-hop, culture, and business, Angela Yi is indeed a multi-hyphenate in every sense of the word. Uh, so without any further ado, Please welcome to the stage, Angela. Check, check. Okay. Hopefully I'm on the right side. How are y'all feeling? So before I introduce Lizzo, I just want to say how excited I am to be here. I'm a huge Lizzo fan. So... I'm definitely like freaking out just to be able to do this. So I just want to thank her for that. And Lizzo is a three-time Grammy award-winning superstar with over 4 billion global streams and a platinum-selling debut album to date. Her first album released in April of 2019, Cause I Love You, debuted at number six on the Billboard Top 200 Albums chart and spent 24 consecutive weeks in the chart's top 10. Truth Hurts also became the longest running number one by a solo female rap artist in history after spending seven weeks atop the charts. Y'all can cheer. <laughs> I'm not done. Lizzo was named both Time Magazine and Entertainment Weekly's 2019 Entertainer of the Year. She's on the cover of People Magazine's Women Changing the World 2022 issue. And she's graced the covers of Rolling Stone, Billboard's Grammy Preview issue, British Vogue, Elle's Women in Music issue, Essence Variety, and many others. She's also a philanthropist, that's important, using her time for a multitude of causes, and she recently added executive producer to her list of titles, and after signing a first look deal with Amazon Studios in 2020, she'll be launching her first television series, Lizzo's Watch Out for the Big Girls, as she searches for confident, Badass women to join her on tour, premiering March 25th on Prime Video. We got some of y'all here? Yeah! I know that's right, y'all. Stand up. Stand up. Let's see. <laughs> Watch out for the big girls. So let's take a look at her new series. I've been waiting for this one. Turn it up. Sent that bitch. Now, are you ready for that jiggle, that wiggle, and everything in the middle? I'm looking for the best dancers to join me on tour. I like her. This is the moment that we've been waiting for. Okay, so this is the fun part. I want to see what the okay. fuck you got. <laughs> oh, we're gonna talk about this shit. I'm standing up. Shit. Slow songs, they for skinny hoes. Can't move all of this here to one of those. I'm looking for confidence. Fuck it up. I'm looking for sexuality. Fuck it up to the tempo. Fuck it up to the tempo. Slow songs and skinny hoes. Fuck it up to the tempo. If you wanted to be just about the dance, you can go somewhere else. You know what time it is. It's bad bitch o'clock. Watch out for the big girl. Watch out for the big girl. And I just said it was gonna be easy being a bad bitch. Girl, run that shit back. Everyone, please help me welcome 
trailblazer, global superstar, and she is 100% that bitch, the one and only Lizzo. this way body language body language um, first of all I love you Lizzo and I'm so happy to be here with you so I want to get that out the way I'm nervous but it made me feel good that you were nervous too I'm so nervous and actually I was fighting back tears <laughs> backstage watching the promo because this is like a dream come true <laughs> this is so beautiful God is good, y'all. Woo! <laughs> wow. Well, these, these are good tears. Yes, happy tears. <laughs> so let's talk about it. I mean, look, you executive produced your first project for Prime Video. So let's discuss why Watch Out for the Big Girls was so important for you. Well, uh, this has been something that's been a passion of mine for years and years and years before I had a TV show. Like, I needed big girls more than I needed a television show. <laughs> so ever since 2014, I have had open casting calls for dancers that look like me. And it's been very difficult, especially the more I'm in the industry and we have these agency casting calls, I don't see me reflected in, you know, the dancers. And then one day I said, you know what, motherfucker, if I got to get a TV show <laughs> to bring some awareness to this, then pull up my sleeves and let's go. <laughs> so I did have the privilege of watching a few episodes. So I won't give away any spoilers, but let's discuss even the setup of the show because it's not like a competition type of elimination uh, type of snarky show. So talk about that, why it was important for you to show this representation the way you did. Well, I mean, if I sent everyone home, then I wouldn't have dancers. <laughs> <laughs> I needed fucking dancers, man. <laughs> um, and it was also important that I change the narrative of what like a reality competition television show looks like. Um, we don't always have to be cruel. We can be kind and we don't have to pit people against each other. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's... <laughs> I feel like it's hard enough in the dance world already for girls who look like me, so why would I create that environment on my, in my space? If I have the power to change that, why not change that? <laughs> now, you also had some vulnerable moments yourself on there that... <laughs> already. <laughs> oh, so mm -hmm. let's talk about that, because there's some things that I think um, when you're in a situation like this and these women are learning, you know, so many different things from you, but you also learn things from them. Absolutely. So can you talk about some things that you learned just oh. doing this show? <laughs> um, I'll say actually one of the more controversial moments is when rumors dropped last year, I had a moment, I saw some really cruel things online about me. Nothing about the music, you know, rumors did very well, baby. We had number hey. ones and top tens, honey. That's my song. <laughs> very well, shout out Cardi B. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just some things about my character that really deeply hurt me. And it was coincidentally the day that I had to film and I was getting my glam done and I had my little wig cap on <laughs> and I said, excuse me guys, I gotta go to the bathroom. I went on live and I cried and I was talking about the fat phobia and the racism that you know people just harbor towards people who look like me and specifically me. And then I had to clean up my face and go in and play rumors for the right. girls. You know, This was not planned at all, but I got extremely emotional when I walked in the room and was like, man, I've been dealing with so much today, but I get to share this moment and put these women on a pedestal and on a platform, and we're gonna eventually show the world that you cannot treat people like that. You cannot treat people right. who look like me like this. Shut the fuck up and just watch the show, bitch. <laughs> so, <laughs> them being there for me in that emotional moment, you know, shout out Isabel too, cause I know that you go through it. Hey baby. <laughs> Um, that was really special. I realized, damn, you know, I need them as much as they need me. 
right? And I do appreciate, and I saw parts with Isabel, and that made me, I'm going to be honest, I got very emotional at certain times watching it too, because mm -hmm. people can be really cruel, and you don't think about, these are human beings. Yeah. Not, some, sometimes people think celebrities aren't human beings, and that thing, yeah, they really do. I just got famous, like <laughs> yesterday, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've been I don't a whole know. person for most of my life, like, <laughs> people need to chill out. I just got here, it's been here like three days. <laughs> I got feelings. <laughs> now, along with that, I wanted to quote something that you said, if you don't see my tears, you're not going to respect my joy. Mm -hmm. And so we're talking about these vulnerable moments that you had. So what was that journey like for you even being able to open up? Because like you said, even though it's really not just today that you got famous, but that's, <laughs> that's a process though, of even being able to feel vulnerable enough to let people see that. Yeah. Um, oh, y'all good? I can hear them. They loud. Y'all can hear them too. I'm sorry. Y'all okay? I'm just making sure everybody's okay. Right <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I think it was just a personal choice to be vulnerable in that way and to, because if I'm always, ha I got this a lot. They're like, are you really always so happy? Are you really always that positive? How? How? You know, and I was like, wow, people really not believe in me. They not, they not feeling me, so I opened myself up and I was like, let me share everything. Because I feel like if I can lead an example for a younger person who's you know, watching me on social media and they're like, it's okay to be sad, it's okay to cry, it's okay to have emotions, it's okay to be angry about something. And it's also okay to be radically positive and practice radical self-care. Um, then, you know, I'm gonna get shit for it, but I'm gonna do it, you know? Cause I don't do this for me. I think a lot of people get that misconstrued. They'd be like, why is she always complaining? Why is she always sad about something? It's like, no, it's not about me. I'm doing this for the generation after me to have something to look at and be like, hey, that's me. I see myself in that person, you know? <laughs> Because like you said, there was no Lizzo before Lizzo. So there have been some moments, I'm sure, that you realize the importance of the representation that you bring. Mm -hmm. Can you share some things that maybe you personally witnessed or seen that you're like, okay, this really matters? Ciao. Oh, wait, what you mean? It really matters? Like, like just to see the... Re the change. Yes. The yeah, the change, because there has been a lot of changes. And listen, you are a body icon, and it's the truth. Because... <laughs> I'm a sex symbol. <laughs> For um, real. I've seen a lot of change, period. Like, um, I was just actually reminiscing on this the other day. Like, you never really heard songs that was like, I love myself. I'm going to be kind to myself today. Like, everything. And, that, and it was fine, but it was just drugs, partying, I'm sad, I'm lost without you, I can't breathe without you. Which, those songs are great. But I was like, <laughs> why don't I, you know, just sing about loving myself? And it was so shocking to people back then. They were like, whoa! But it's such a beautiful thing to, you know, look up now and posit body positivity, self-love, love yourself. These are very common terms now being used in media. And that was not the case mm -hmm. over five years ago. So we've come super far and I'm super proud of that. As far as body representation, we got a long ways to go. <laughs> we got a long ways to go, but, we're, but I'm seeing the change in the small way because what, I, what I'm doing, I feel like is I'm bringing, big girls have always had value but I don't think society has seen the value in bigger bodies. Mm -hmm. So by just being myself and being extremely talented and iconic and beautiful and super special, I think it has <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it has shown the world that, you know, I am valuable, I am worthy. I didn't need to prove that to nobody, I just am. And so what this show is doing, I wanted to lift these women up and show the world they're valuable, they're worthy, and they bring in money, baby. They bring in coins and ducats. So we need representation ASAP. We need agents, managers, all that. Sign me, sign them. I hope they all become superstars after this. You're all superstars now. Like, you know what I'm saying? Let's go. <laughs> Well, what are you hoping to see for these women as part of their journey? I know, like you said, for them to be superstars, get to the coins, of course. Mm -hmm. But what are some other things that you're hoping to see? Well, this is just the beginning. I want them to shake up the in industry, come in and shift the paradigm and, and be in demand and, you know, change the rules. And I think they're doing that already just by existing. And I'm so glad I found them and they found me. So, and y'all were so willing and ready to share your stories and be so open and so vulnerable. And y'all were on the ride, honey. I had y'all doing crazy shit. <laughs> I got them doing crap. Uh, you in the back, crazy shit. 
You gotta watch the show to yes, find you out. Do. In a very short amount of time, and they <laughs> were all in. You were a thousand percent in. So make some noise for yourself, because that was incredible. I couldn't have did that. I, I hope that they're all booked and blessed, and I want to book and bless them. And I hope that the rest of the industry wakes up and does the same. <laughs> I was out of breath watching some of those scenes. Listen I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I've heard that a lot. But in this case, Angela, that's facts, because some of these things were very <laughs> insane. It's Olympic-level dancing. Like, mm -hmm. they had to learn an entire 90-minute show in such a short amount of time and, and also do all of the, the challenges that we had and to, to deep, go deep into yourselves. Is somebody screaming? <laughs> I, I'm excited too, child. Excited. I'm excited too. <laughs> they say, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Now, let's talk about you as an executive producer. This is a new role for you, so what was that like? Baby, I, I've been a boss. I've been a boss, I just, I just wasn't put in the position to have that title. And I think that, you know, now, thank goodness, I have an incredible team. They, and shout out to Prime Video, they put me in the position to put some respect on my name. And hey. I'm like, yo, I am an executive producer. From the beginning, I have touched every single thing that comes out, like from mixing my music to editing my music videos to making sure that I am a part of everything creative. And, you know, I got business people for the business stuff. You know, I'm just real cute <laughs> and stuff. And talented. We got to be realistic, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm going to keep it real. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I think, you know, 2022 is the year of me stepping into my power and, and reclaiming my title, you know, <laughs> director, executive producer, and star. I I'm love childish. it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so childish. <laughs> so for women who are watching that sometimes we don't know how to really uh, negotiate for ourselves or even know our own value, mm. right? What is some advice that you would give to them? <clears throat> well, I would say that don't be hard on yourself because society don't make that shit easy. They don't set us up to see our value or to see our worth, especially black women, especially big black women. Um, all the way down to our bodies, they've devalued us. So it's not, you weren't set up for, I wasn't set up for success. You know, born in Detroit, raised in Houston, you know, Southwest, you from the SWAT. <laughs> you know, big black girl, like, you know, if I was 10 years old and they're like, hey, you're gonna be a, you know, body positive, body icon, superstar pops so I would've been like, bitch, what the hell? What kind of pork, what kind of lies, dreams? And um, so I would say don't, be hard on yourself, but just remember that you are. Remember that you are, you are it. You are whatever you say you are and you're whatever you believe. You're not what these people say you are. You're not what society says you are. You are what the fuck you say you are. So look in that motherfucking mirror and remind yourself of who you are because you are that bitch. You are. 100%. Whatever that is. A zillion percent, a billion, baby. <laughs> we in billions now. <laughs> now, you just mentioned Houston. So I do. Southwest. I, and we got Houston girls on the cast as well. Okay, <laughs> H-Town. Now, I want to talk about what is going on, though, with politics, because that's important to you. Have a platform, and you've been really vocal about how you feel about different things happening in Texas. I know mm. we're in Texas right <clears> now, so I would love to get your take on that. Absolutely. <laughs> um, you know, I'm proud to rep Houston, but I'm not proud to rep Texan politics right now. And there are very regressive laws being passed. We have um, a cast member named Jayla, who she lives authentically as herself, as a trans woman. And they are taking away the right for young children to have a, a chance to live authentically as themselves. And it's it's a violation of human rights. Okay. Trans rights are human rights, <laughs> period. Absolutely. They, 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 forget, they forget that. They forget, I'm like, y'all, we got a lot of other things y'all need to be handling instead of y'all being in people's homes, telling them what to do with their body and being all up in their uterus. Get your motherfucking stuff, <laughs> mind your business. <laughs> because, the abortion ban is yes. atrocious as well. Mind your business. Stay out of my body. This is not political. This is not political. 
So that's why, I mean, I've, I've, I firmly disagree, but you know, on a systemic level, it's like, there's a lot of things. I am changing things on a cultural level right. because I'm a part of the culture. I'm a musician, I'm an actress, but you know, there are people in charge who can change things on a systemic level and they're letting us down. Yeah, absolutely. You know, why men great till they gotta be great? <laughs> like be great you know represent the people and yeah and I do feel like sometimes I see like people and artists feel like they don't want to get involved in politics but how can you not how can you not reflect the times as an artist because what we do or we're a conduit we we communicate for the people hopefully we represent for the people and we put it on a on a on a platform we put it on a stage and through speakers you know um and hopefully you know i can do my small part to speak for the people and represent and just keep pushing that's why i'm here i'm you know what i'm saying i'm gonna show up because i'm a big black girl representing for what the fuck i need and i got people on this show who need to be represented so i'm here Hey. I'm here, baby. <laughs> I'm here. I love it. <laughs> now, a lot of people are inspired and feel empowered by you. Mm -hmm. Who do you look to for inspiration and empowerment? Woo! Oh my gosh. Um, I will say that was a long journey because a lot of times I feel like I didn't really have anyone. I felt very alone. And I think that's why it's like, oh, her self-love is it didn't come easy, it came from a sense of deep loneliness. And it's like, well, if you're by yourself, make the best of it, fall in love with yourself, be inspired by yourself, big yourself up. And I think once I healed that, whatever that deep wound is, maybe I inherited that wound of loneliness and not feeling worthy or lovable. Once I did that, I was able to see all of these people around me who've been giving me love my entire life. Yes. You know, I've been surrounded by strong women ever since I was a baby, like from my mother and my sister to, you know, the Kirkwood and Johnson family. I know my cousins in here, they did hair on the show. What's up, Pooh and Bapa? <laughs> like, <laughs> strong, strong women and then my my friend groups, you know, from Cormo Click, Lexo, you know, to <laughs> Sophia Aris, my DJ, like the big girls, I, I'm surrounded by strong women and they, you know, lift me up and they give me inspiration. They keep it so real with me. And they, the, your love style is your love style, especially you, Lexo, we, we punch each other in the titties and shit. <laughs> <laughs> She'll uppercut my titties real quick. <laughs> But that's love. I want that real love. All right, my friends in here, don't do that to me. <laughs> you get used to it. <laughs> now for 2022, what are some things that you plan to do? Is there, because obviously we got the ladies that's going to be on tour. Mm -hmm. So new music. I've been hearing some new music. Oh, let me tell you something, y'all. Y'all about to get the motherfucking scoop because a bitch been busy. but <laughs> I've been busy. But I can finally tell everybody as of, like literally I'm flying home today to master my album. It's done. <laughs> Wow. Yes, God, all my life I had to record. <laughs> it's done. So it's coming very, very soon. I love that scoop, y'all. We okay. got it here first. And it's good. <laughs> I worked real hard on it, so it better be good, but it's good. <laughs> now, on the show, are we going to get some previews? I did see some music. So is some of that on the album? Yes. <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> there, there's going to be, there's going to be, um, previews of new music on the show. So before the album comes out, so if you want some new music, watch, watch out for the big girls <laughs> on Prime Video, March 25th. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what episode, so you got to binge all of them. <laughs> well, what, so what about a tour? So tell me about that. Since mm -hmm. we're getting all the deets, let's get everything. I'm definitely touring. Um, hold on y'all. I know they like, okay, when's the auditions here? <laughs> What's the choreo? <laughs> Where's Tanisha? <laughs> um, there's definitely a tour, but um, we have a lot of surprises. Mm -hmm. Like, this is just the beginning. This Damn. is the tip of the titty, honey. <laughs> I feel like punching you. It's a, don't punch me. <laughs> this is, look what you did, Alexia. <laughs> this is just the tip. <laughs> what about some collaborations? Can you give any of those up? Oh, 
That's a great question. What's another great question? What other, <laughs> what other great questions do you have, Miss Yi? <laughs> I'm asking because we did see you had SZA on the show, right? I, yes! I know she's on there. So I'm like, does that mean? And Missy Elliott. Yes! I'm like, what does that mean for the album? Oh my gosh, it means so much, girl. <laughs> it means so much. <laughs> It's cold outside today, huh? The weather is interesting. <laughs> it's weird weather. <laughs> what else you got on that car? <laughs> you know what? That's not even on the car. I'm just, I'm just freestyling right now. You thought she was slick. Y'all know I'm nosy, right? Y'all know I'm nosy. Uh -huh. <laughs> so what do you see as the correlation between self-love and dance? Because that's also a theme that I saw on the show. Wow. Um... And shout out to Grace Holden, my original big girl. She's a dance therapist and she just graduated, okay? She's officially certified as a dance therapist. <laughs> and um, I even think through her, I've learned about how like physical movement, you know, can open up so much physiologically. Mm -hmm. We hold so much tension in our hips. Like there's certain moves that you could start, you could start doing a Shakira and just bust into tears because there's just, there's so much in there. Um, <laughs> there's a power in there. Um, I think, you know, I recently did a TED talk on twerking because I thought it was very important. I very saw that. Important. Um, <laughs> and uh, I think actually through twerking, um, I discovered a lot of my self love. Like, I know this sounds so shallow, but the, the, the d certain angles of my ass while I'm twerking have just really led me to appreciate my body so much. <laughs> Y'all don't even know. Uh -huh. I, I hate it. I hated my ass. It was like my least favorite thing about myself. And then once you get into that suit and you walk in like a dog just a little bit. Oh, uh shoot. -huh. You walk in like a Pomeranian. Uh -huh. um, I was like, wow, I'm beautiful. Like, <laughs> shallow but it's true like I'm not right. shallow I'm deep bitch but um <laughs> uh, it, it it led me to find like self-love in a physical way and I think like after that you kind of just keep going deeper and deeper I always start on the surface I look in the mirror I'm like this is who you're gonna be for the rest of your life you like it no all right let's learn to like it and then once I learned to like it all of these other things started coming out like my personality my traumas my pain my come on that Ashley <laughs> Ashley said, come on, Shonda, Father God. Shonda, Father Honda. Um, <laughs> you start uncovering all of those things, and that's the real work. Right. I think people think self-care now, because it's been so commercialized. It it's definitely like, has. Bubble baths and rosé, self-care, which on a physical level, yes. But the real work really comes into, do I like myself as a person? Can I be alone with myself? No cell phone, no distractions, and just really reckon with the person I've become why am I this way? What's, what's happened to me that I'm ignoring or not addressing? And I think that is why twerking led me to falling in love with my ass, led me to looking in the mirror, led me to discovering myself and kind of excavating, you know, who I am and falling in love with that person. Because I'm not, you know, I look perfect, I know, <laughs> but I'm not perfect and I'm not perfect and... <laughs> Sorry, y'all. This is supposed to be a keynote speech. We're like, so when I came up with the idea, it's not like that. It's totally not like. <laughs> but I'm not perfect. But um, I love that about myself, right. and I and I can call it out, and I can address it, and I can play with it, find humor in it, and be comfortable with it. And I think that's honest because let's keep it real. How many people in this room think that they're perfect? Okay, a couple Sophia people Harris. say yeah. <laughs> But how many people like 100% can look at themselves and love what they see in the mirror all the time? Because I know I don't feel like that. It's a hard. Are you serious? Well, we I need to get more of these hands raised. <laughs> all right, now nah, we about to do a Lizzo show exercise. Let's do it. All right. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to say this to yourself and say, I love you. I love you. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. And you can do anything do anything okay no i need more volume from these people one more time say it to yourself i love you i love you you are beautiful you are beautiful and you can do anything and you can do anything now i want you to look at the person next to you <laughs> put your mask on <laughs> uh-huh say i love you 
You are beautiful. You are beautiful. And you can do anything. Now face the front. And I want you to say it to me and Miss Yi. I want to say I love you. I love you. You are beautiful, bitch. You are beautiful, bitch. And y'all can do anything. And y'all can do anything. Okay, now raise your hand if you like what you see in the mirror. Raise your hand. <laughs> if you're not there yet, it's okay, but you're getting there. Next time you look in the mirror, say that to yourself. It works, I promise. <laughs> Listen. I'm so glad that we are having these keynote moments. <laughs> <laughs> Keynotes with Lizzo. <laughs> I'm nervous. Because <laughs> I know I feel better already, though. Child, I feel better, too. Child. Honestly. And I, so let's get into this. Like, the, um, Let's talk about Neka, the series director. Yes! Is she here? Neka! Where's she at? Up, Stand Neka? up, Neka. We want to see you. Yes. It's so important to have a black woman at the helm of the camera on this entire series. Her vision, the, the way that she cared for the cast members. These girls were taken so well care of. Thank you so much, Naka. We appreciate you. We love you. I say, I say, I say. And she killed say. it. So what were those early conversations like with Naka to make sure that the storytelling was right? Like what kind of discussions did y'all have with each other? I think it was just important to realize that this is like, this was a very black show. <laughs> It is. Yes. And I'm proud of it. <laughs> and we wanted to make sure that we created an environment, especially on camera, that could be conducive to just having black people and not have a stereotype or, you know what I'm saying? And I think she did such a great job of that, of just making them feel comfortable so they could be themselves, so we could see them for who they really are. And not a caricature, like it would happen so much on television. Right. And the importance to me also was being able to give constructive criticism and for people to be able to accept that too, because sometimes that's not easy also. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there's an episode where Naked directs the music videos. I was like, y'all on y'all own. They can go, <laughs> they can go put whip y'all in the shape. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's not easy, but I think everybody was up to the task and they were willing and ready mm -hmm. and they over delivered, over delivered. Now, let me ask you this. I know it's early and the show hasn't even started yet. March 24th, right? Is 25th. It, oh, 25th. Sorry. March 25th. 24th at midnight. At midnight. Stay <laughs> up. Um, but I do want to ask you, are you already thinking about a season two? <gasps> yes, we're going to be back. <laughs> Period. Um, for me, I always think about things as how I actually need them. Like, I'm, if I need more dancers, whatever I need, I think the watch out for the big girls will always kind of supply. Whether that's dancers, models, who knows? I think that um, the door is wide open and anything is possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. She went around that. <laughs> like, let's get greenlit. <laughs> she, she twerked around episode two, whether or not it's going to happen. <laughs> now, what about the song, Watch Out for the Big Girls? Because every time I say the name of the show, I sing it. My job for the big girl. My job for the big girl. Say cool, ta, cool, ka, ka. <laughs> um, <laughs> so talk about that song and the importance of that song. I'm not even gonna hold you. Like I saw, um, there was like a a TikTok. Oh my gosh, am I gonna get in trouble? It don't matter. We already got the rights cleared. Everybody good. <laughs> um, I saw a TikTok. And um, I actually think it was a big boy dancer and he was fucking it up to that. And I was like, this is so cool. And it was like, wah, 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 left, right, up and down and watch out for the big girls and bang, bang, what make for me, rotate for me, hands up though, ah, Ooh, watch out for the big girls. And I said, oh, what is this? And it's actually a, like an older, uh, like Jersey club. Yeah. I remember that okay. song. Cause it don't matter who you were, you I get out on the dance shit. floor where Watch Out For The Big Girls comes on. Um, exactly, and I was like, oh, this speaks to my Shonda, my Shonda rhymes and my spirit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it's a moment that, um, you know, I can dance. I don't know if y'all noticed, but you I can noticed. dance a little bit. You know, I got the... <laughs> Uh, I danced a little bit, a little bit, and I, and I wanted to have like a full choreo moment in my set. And I was like, I want to show these people what I got, 
You know what I'm saying? I want to dance with the Goyles. Mm -hmm. So um, that was an opportunity to do that. And I think that that moment just kind of was so dynamic. And it was so emblematic of like my relationship with the big girl dancers on stage that it was like the perfect song, perfect theme song, perfect title of the show um, to match the culture of what we're doing. It was like, you can't, you know, you can't buy moments like that. It just yeah. happened naturally. So um, it's not even my song. I just like it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, that's it. love, though. Yeah. It's, it's perfect. Fun fact, I am re-singing it on the uh, theme song. So that's me going, watch out for the big girl. Yay. Watch out for the big girl. Fun so you know that got clear. Prime yeah, me playing listen. with that. You got to watch it to hear it, though, guys. March 25th. You got to watch it. I'm sorry. You got to watch it. <laughs> now, we are going to have time for some questions, but I do want to say that I love the fact that you've got everything lined up. You have the show coming out. You just are about to go master the album. You just had a vacation. Huh? <laughs> Huh? What was that? <laughs> we saw the fishes. That was like a, we saw the fishes in the pool. We saw the arm. An airplane went. We by. saw the hair. <laughs> he is hairy. <laughs> but and, and you posted happy. So do you feel like right now you just feel happy? Yes. <laughs> I am. Because it's like I just feel like everything that I've worked so hard for in my life is finally coming to fruition. And that doesn't mean that I'm not not working. Like I'm going home to master my album tonight. So it's like mm -hmm. the work begins really. But, um, you know, you have dreams and you never think they're going to happen. And then you look up and you're on stage at a keynote speech at South by Southwest talking about your TV show. Yes. <laughs> you know, that you've been dreaming about since 2014 and God is truly good. So I, I always used to live in the future or I would dwell in the past. Like I was sitting, I'd be like, I can't believe I did that. Or be like, what's next? What's next? And I think that I've just been so present lately because I don't want this moment to pass me by. I want to soak it up and I want to appreciate it and you and all of you and just say, thank you so much for spending this time with me right here, right now. Yay. <laughs> I love y'all. Oh, we did a TikTok yesterday. I need to do a TikTok with you. Soraya, Soraya, S Sierra, Sierra. That's how you say it? Okay. Okay. I didn't know it was Sierra. You spell it cute. I like how you spell it, Sierra. Uh, <laughs> listen, this got to be the best keynote. I don't care. <laughs> oh, okay. But I believe we do have some questions. Okay. So I want to make sure we leave time for that. I think they said they're going to show up on the screen. Is that correct? Okay, yes, here they are. Okay, so let's see. A lot of women I know, including myself, struggle with imposter syndrome. How do you maintain 100% that bitch? Hey, even when I'm crying crazy. Uh, yeah, I think we kind of touched on that a little bit with like, it, it, they don't make it easy. It's almost like it's, the system is designed or the culture is designed to support imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, there is a character on the show. I keep saying character, y'all are people. <laughs> <laughs> it's real life. <laughs> there's a person, there's a woman on the show, I believe like Charity, you struggled a lot with like, I really am supposed to be here. Like I really am a good dancer. And I think that that was a huge arc for her was learning like to get over that imposter syndrome and looking around and people aren't lying to you. When you're in the space and you're looking around and people are just as talented as you and y'all are killing it together and you're where you won, where, where you said you wanted to be, yes. you, that's not, we ain't not lying to you. That's not imposter syndrome. So you I think, earned it. I, you did earn it. I think it's about being present. And I think Charity, you learned that just being like, wait, so y'all not just gassing me up. Like I'm really... <laughs> I can really shake that ass. That, <laughs> that dun -dun -dun. Uh, so I think, I think it's that, being present and looking around and being like, this is where I'm supposed to be and owning that. All right, now this is great from Jonathan. I first saw you perform at South by Southwest in 2017 in this convention center with around 20 to 30 attendees. How does it feel to come back five years first later? First of all, the shade. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was I doing? <laughs> Y'all, I don't be remembering what I, I don't even know what I did yesterday, Jesus. This was um, five years ago, so now here you are. I mean, look at how this room, people are standing, you know? I, I am, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely floored. I'm, it's very surreal. I mean, I walked on the stage and I felt like I was in like a Tom Hanks movie or something. I was, <laughs> everybody clapping for me, for little old me, for big old me. Uh, it, it feels great, but you know what? I really feel like I deserve it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> All right, now from a fellow big girl, this is Sarah. How do you feel about the word fat? Is it a missed opportunity mm. to use euphemisms like big, curvy, mm. instead of reclaiming the F word? Mm, this is deep. This is deep. This is deep. Deep question alert. Um, because I think the f interesting thing about the word fat is everybody uses it no matter what their body type is. Um, it's like a feeling, which is so interesting. They're like, oh, I feel fat today. And I'm like, but the, and they make it a negative thing. Um, I think that it depends on the person. I never call somebody fat because I know how that can hurt. Mm -hmm. I used to get called fat ass every single day <laughs> on the bus in the fifth grade. And by the 500th fat ass, <laughs> don't laugh because she was there. <laughs> by the 500th fat ass, I started to just say, who fucking cares? Like, it meant nothing to me. The word lost its meaning. It lost its sting. And, um... I started to just kind of put a positive spin on it. Like, yeah, I got a fat ass, what's up? <laughs> like, what's good? So I have a different relationship with the word fat. I can freely call myself fat and I don't like, you know, I'll be like, I'm fat. And they're like, no, you're beautiful. Yeah, I'm fat and beautiful. Right. <laughs> you know, it, they're not mutually ex exclusive. So like, I have a different relationship, but I also know that it, it still hurts people. What I really want to do, and I know I'm just one person, is take away that sting from that word for everybody. Because I've done it for myself, and it's really liberating. Because now if I see people, I get like, you know those Twitter bots, like, young boy better, all of that shit. I, I get that too. Mid. I get young boy better, but I also get gym, gym, fat. I'm like, okay. It means it doesn't hurt me. It means nothing. Like... You, they don't have that power over me. Especially when you click on their page and you're like, uh, okay. Yeah, like, it's like... You, okay. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> um, I'm not going to say nothing because I don't like, I don't like right. bringing people down. I'll let her bring you down. Not, <laughs> Speak for me, ye. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, would, I would like to do that. I would like to, you know, in the best way I can, facilitate a space where we can take the sting and the stigma away from that because everyone has fat in their body. Like that's a human body thing. You have muscle, you have bones, you got water, you have fat. And I think it's a beautiful thing. So um, one day, but it's one step at a time, I think that you have to be very careful with how you speak to people. Choose your words carefully. And you know, you can really hurt someone with that word, right. but I'm fat. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm fabulous. <laughs> and by the way, and healthy, because I think there's this misconception that yeah. if you're skinny, you're healthy. Or, yeah. And that's definitely not true. And I don't you think... can be bigger and be healthy. So mm -hmm. I want to put that out there, too, because people will be like, it's just unhealthy. <clears throat> yeah, and I also, exactly. And I also don't want to speak on someone's health, period. Like, wh why are you speaking on somebody's health? Like, are you their doctor? Like, what? What's going on? And if you are the doctor, cool, but that, why is that my business? Why are you tweeting it? What are you tweeting it for? <laughs> so <laughs> I think that some, a person's health should be between them and their doctor, right. you know, and them and themselves. And let's just leave it at that. Like whether a big person is a big and unhealthy or big and healthy is none of your fucking business. You can't look and tell. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cause I know I was laying in bed out of breath watching the dances there you and go. I was <laughs> We need to put her through some boot camp. I know. <laughs> All right. And then I also want to talk about um, your veganism and your vegan cooking. Period. <laughs> yes. Oh, Mo Tutta. E Tutta. <laughs> Mo Tutta. My, she is a vegan on the show. Beautiful dancer. We love you, Moesha. Um, which, what you want to say? What you want to talk about with that? <laughs> yeah, because I know that's been something that you've been talking about and that's been yeah. your journey. So how, like, what's going on with this veganism? <sighs> um... Because I'd be in and out of it. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I think, like, eat, eat what you want, how you want. Like, I've been kind of moving into, like, intuitive eating. Uh, because, yeah. Who said yes? Preach. I see you, baby. I don't uh, know what intuitive eating is, if you can just. Intuitive eating is basically, like, you know, I'm not very well read on it. But it's when you're just listening to your body. Like, when your body's hungry, eat. <laughs> when your body's not hungry, don't eat. If yeah. your body wants something fatty, you know, eat fatty stuff. If your body wants water, drink water. I think if you're, when your body needs rest, take rest. When your body needs sunlight, get sunlight. Like, I've been listening to my body more. And I think that it did lead me to, like, veganism. I wasn't like, you know what? <laughs> Everybody's going vegan. I was like, no. It was more so, like... I just feel better when I eat vegetables. Right. 
and period. And I don't think anyone else should be vegan if you don't want to be. I mean, try it out. I think like food is a beautiful thing. And I, and I really want to help redefine people's relationships with food as well, because food is this beautiful thing that we have. Like, and it gives us energy. It gives us life. It makes me happy. I start tap dancing at the table when I'm eating and shit. I do the happy food feeling. dance. And I feel like there's a lot of shame <laughs> and guilt and, and um, there's a lot of darkness with our relationship with food and eating. And, um, when I found intuitive eating, it just led me to veganism. And I just want people to see like how fun it is. I'm like, I'm just having fun. I like cooking my little meals and I want you to enjoy food. I want you to enjoy cooking your little meals or ordering your little takeout or seeing a little vegan McDonald's on TikTok and being like, let me go to that vegan McDonald's, <laughs> try to the McDouble real quick. You know, food is fun and fuel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, now, um, what is one thing that you are most proud of doing or accomplishing in your career? Baby, I think I'm so proud of so many things, <laughs> but I think creating um, this strong crew of women, co-creating um, a strong group of women uh, is something I'm super proud of, where we are so supportive and um, encouraging to each other, and we've all allowed each other to grow since 2012, 2011. Um, and there's nothing like that. I think people see our relationship like, you know, everyone in my career is like, whether it's DJ, hairstylist, like dancers, we all are working together, mm -hmm. but we're also sisters and we're all best friends. And I think that that is such a rare thing to see. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think it exists. Mm -hmm. I just don't think that they popularize it or show it off you know, for whatever reason, <laughs> they don't. So I think that it's, it is refreshing to people when they see my working relationship with these women that I've known for 10 plus years now. Um, I think I'm super proud of my relationships with them and how far they've grown as women mm -hmm. and as business women and as people, you know? I can't lie, I was ready to quit my job and go work for Lizzo. Ah! I was like, we need you, child. We need <laughs> an interview. amazing. Where you gonna come and interview with us <laughs> all the time. <laughs> now, how would you describe your show in three words? Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow, Woo. that was it. Watch out for the big girls. I think that's it. You gotta watch the. I mean, you don't have to watch the show, but do it. No, you do. Yeah. <laughs> you I'm have not gonna to. force you to watch it, but you're gonna be mad when everyone else talking about it and you feel left out. <laughs> Are you gonna do like some instructional dance? This is what I was saying. I need uh, the girls to do some instructional dance videos because it's not enough for me to just sit there and watch it. I need to like learn. Oh, yeah. Something. I'm down. I'm down, you know what I'm saying? We gotta, we gotta talk, we gotta talk to the crew, but I'm down for that. It's, it's being trademarked, but something else is coming. Okay, look at us with all the spoilers. Listen, I'm a business woman. <laughs> Let me handle my business, damn. And for the last question, oh, Lizzo, God. can we take a moment to celebrate? Can you stand up? Yes. This amazing outfit. Is it cute? Is it? My and, pants been falling down all day. And can we walk the runway for a full look? I need some music though. <laughs> Something. <laughs> oh, my booty out. Was my booty out? It wasn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, let me tell you, the shoe is inside of the leggings. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you Sorry, so much. Make it over there, my feet hurt. <laughs> uh, that was it. But Lizzo, are there any closing words you want to give? Because this is your keynote. Woo! And it was a very um, traditional keynote. Very traditional, <laughs> very prim and proper. Did I fuck my mic up? <laughs> uh, <laughs> titties. All right. 
Uh, <laughs> I just want to say, um, <laughs> you know, the true stars of the show are sitting right there. And they did such, please stand up. Stand up, please. Hi, Sydney. Asia, Kiara, Charity, Isabel, Ariana, Sydney, Jayla, Ashley, Moesha, and Jasmine. <laughs> These are the true stars of the show. And you guys, you went in just 100% ready and you're, you got so vulnerable and so real. And even more than that, you're fucking talented. You can fucking dance. God damn it, and I just wanna, I cannot wait to share you, your story and your talents with the world. So thank you so much for doing this with me, being on this journey, and we got shows to play, bitch. Let's go. <laughs> That's all I gotta say, y'all. Watch out for the big girls, prom video, March 25th. <laughs> Thanks, thank you, Lizzo, give it up for Lizzo one more time. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God.